Hi everybody, Stuart from Supermachine here. It's a very exciting time to be alive with all of the advances in artificial intelligence and especially image generation. We're trying to keep on top of the latest developments and have rolled out SDXL across Supermachine. We've not only released the base model, we've had a go at training a few of our own models and we'll continue to do this in the future. And we've also chosen a few of the best models which are open source available for you to use in Supermachine today. But that leads a question and something that I've been debating inside about the SDXL models specifically. With the original stable diffusion models, training a checkpoint on top was relatively simple and easy to convey the style that you wanted. With SDXL, because the base model is of such a high quality, it is a lot harder to train a style or a specific way of doing things. So in this video, I just want to showcase a image prompt across all of the different SDXL models that we have in Supermachine. And then I want to show you what I think is the future for creating images with SDXL. And I believe this to be using LoRa's on top of it. And we've added a few of those. So I will show you what they look like also. So let's get into it. Logging into my Supermachine account to get to the SDXL models, all I have to do is go from all models at the top to hitting SDXL. You'll then see the five models that we currently have. There is the base model here. There is the two models that we have created ourselves, Super Machine Abstract XL and the Mystery Model XL. And then two of the favorites from the open source community, Dream Shaper XL and MBB XL Alpha. You'll see these are the settings that I've used for generating. I used the 1024 by 1024 and I used this prompt here. Futuristic cyberpunk robot smiling mailbox design looking at the camera portrait. I used this sampler, the DPM++ 2M Karas, and I used the guidance of seven and the steps of 12. What I really want to show you here is I generated four images from each of these models. And just to show you that there's no real standout differences between them. So Dream Shaper XL provided these four outputs. The MBB XL provided these four outputs. I will say with the MBB XL, you are getting more of a human touch where it's shown a few images of humans compared to just robots. The mystery model XL is roboty like that. And the original SDXL looks like this. And the Super Machine Abstract looks like this. I really like these first two. They're kind of anime style. And then we've got these other two, which are more like photorealism style. But I think what I'm trying to show here is, unlike you had with the original Stable Diffusion fine tunes and the custom models, there isn't one which you could say, okay, this is a bad model. It's really the way that they've been trained produces good outputs. I wouldn't say any of these images are specifically bad, but it's really how are they influencing the base model and are they making stuff which is better than the base model? So the base model is this one here. And it's a case of, are any of these a massive improvement over the base model? or are they just influencing the style slightly? And if I hit generate, say 20 times, would the base model give me some of the outputs that some of these fine tunes are giving me? And the answer is possibly. So there is a future for fine tuning these models, but I think it's a lot harder and more difficult than it was before. And I think there's still a lot of people trying to figure out the best ways to fine tune. And it's not just a case of dump thousands of images in hit fine tune on a software or code. 
come back in a couple of days and wham, bam, you have a new model. I think there is a lot more thought that needs to go into it. And this is definitely what we found when we did our fine tunes for the Super Machine Abstract, which is this one, which is mainly trained on Ghibli style images. So I'm super happy to see these two, these two outputs here because it sort of shows that what we did kind of works there. And then the mystery model XL was trained on uh, Lexica aperture type images. So it's interesting as well to see the output. I, I can see how it has been influenced by that. So it's you know, when we're talking about these models, it's, it's hard for me to talk about the models where I don't know the data sets that went into it, but the ones that we train in house I do know what went into it, so I can see and really sort of um, understand more what the image is out and what the image is in sort of affect the outputs of the models. So this is the first part of the video where I just wanted to do that basic overview and say, you know, each model is good. They're all good now, but they all offer something slightly different, only a little bit different. I think the 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 benchmarks across different models is less now there's less differentiators and this is where i think lauras are going to change the game with sdxl you're probably wondering what is a laura and how does it affect the image generation well there are certain advantages to using lauras when you are trying to generate images and also when you are playing around with different models one of the main advantages of a LoRa is you can use it across multiple models. So any of the SDXL models can use LoRas which have been trained on SDXL. And the same goes for the base stable diffusion and LoRas trained on that. The way that you would train a LoRa is to take a sample of images. So say for example, I wanted to train a LoRa on a Japanese kimono. So if I wanted to do that, I would take multiple images, say 30 images of Japanese kimono or women wearing this Japanese kimono. And by doing this, I would be able to then train a LoRa, which would know, okay, when I use the term Japanese kimono or kimono or whatever, it will know, okay, this is what the user is after and this is what I should give the user. So LoRa's are very flexible in that regard to be used on top of base models. And you know, if you were to use a LoRa on top of an anime model compared to a photorealistic model, you would have the same effect, but it would look anime compared to photorealistic. Uh, I think the future of SDXL is going to be using LoRa's on top of the base model or any of these fine tunes, which are pretty similar to the base model. And then by doing this, you'll be able to get different styles and different influences out. So we've loaded two of these up onto Super Machine, which you can play with today, and we will be adding more in the future. We have added a chibi style Laura and we have added a t-shirt design style Laura and I'm going to show you how they look and also how you can call them within your generations on Super Machine. The first model we've added is this Chibi style XL and we are looking at Civit AI on how we use this. So we have added this to Super Machine and the trigger word is Chibi here. So how would I use this in Super Machine? Well, I would come to my prompt at the top here. I would put the word Chibi at the front of it, and I will put the LoRa. So we are putting in these uh, brackets, the LoRa, and we are putting Chibi X SDXL, and then colon one. So this means that we want to give the LoRa the full weight of one, and this is our prompt. So if I wanted to change this to something else, I would change what I have highlighted here to whatever I want to change it to. 
And by using this, you can see how it affects the images. So again, I've done four generations for each of the models which we have for SDXL, and you can see how the outputs look. So this one is the Dream Shaper XL. We have those four outputs. The MBB XL Alpha looks like this. The Mystery Model XL, really like some of these. The original SDXL model and the Chibi, uh, the <laughs> Super Machine Ash Abstract XL model. So you can see this. Uh, I like this one. He looks like a, uh, an officer. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So these are the outputs that we've got. And compared to these previous uh, outputs without the LoRa, you can see that it's had a massive effect on what we are doing and what we are creating. So that is the advantages of using a LoRa because it completely changes what is possible with the pictures. And just to go over again how to call it, this one in particular, use Chibi at the front. You could use this anywhere in the prompt, really, but I think at the front works well. And then you need these uh, brackets like this, and you need to have the word Laura, L-O-R-A, and then you need colon, and then you need Chibi SDXL, and then you need a colon, and then you need one, and then you need to close these with brackets. And if you have all of that, then you will get images like this out. So let's have a look at our second one now, which is the t-shirt design. So for the t-shirt designs, I am using this Laura from Civic AI. And to call this, I can either write t-shirt design or sticker. And you'll see that it says use t-shirt design or sticker. And I need to provide the details for the LoRa. So I will show you how you can do this in Super Machine. So the way that I've done this here is I've put futuristic cyberpunk robot smiling t-shirt design LoRa. So I've put the trigger word here, t-shirt design, and then I've put the LoRa code here. So we have LoRa colon t-shirt sdxl colon one all within these weird brackets so if you do all of that then you will be able to generate these images and what i just want to do as a test whilst i am making this video is just change the t-shirt design to be at the front and i'm going to generate four of these images using um, the mystery model XL, because I think that was the one which gave us the best outputs here. And I just want to see how this looks. So whilst this is generating, and remember the SDXL models generations can be a little bit slower than the original stable diffusion gener generations. It's something that we are working on, um, but you can queue them up and they will complete. So just add them to the queue. But here you can see the difference between the different models using this t-shirt LoRa. So this is Dream Shaper XL. You're getting these outputs. I would say some of them would look good on the t-shirt. Some of them are more just uh, generic sort of outputs here. The MBB XL has taken it quite literally and it's provided a few people uh, showcasing t-shirt designs. So that is quite funny. And then we have, uh, this one's quite nice. That would be quite nice on the t-shirt and this one also. The Mystery Model XL, I think has done the best job on this. I think this first one, second one, third one less so, and the fourth one would make really excellent t-shirts. And then we have the original SDXL where we have this one, which I think would be a great t-shirt. These two, probably less so. And then we have, again, the t-shirt design taken quite literally. And finally, we have the abstract Excel, where we have some interesting outputs. 
I think this one would look quite nice on a t-shirt if you were to just extend this uh, this background, not have these buildings on the side. Um, fairly interesting. And then the one that I just queued up, moving, moving t-shirt design to the front, has shown probably worse outputs. So, you know, when you are prompting these things, where you decide to put the words can have an effect on the outputs. So by moving it, so this is it with, at the front on the mystery model XL, and then this is it at the end on the mystery model XL. I think you'll see that these are a lot better output than these, but hey, this is why we run experiments so we can see these things and really understand what is working and what isn't. So I hope that gives you some ideas of what's possible with STXL and also using LoRa's for STXL within Supermachine. I will put all the details of how to use these LoRa's in Supermachine below this video so you can check that out for yourself. If you haven't used SDXL yet, please try it out. We have these five models for you to experiment with within Riku, and you can also try them with the LoRa's today. If you are looking for specific models in the future, or you would like to see specific LoRa's, or you'd like us to create some, then please let us know what you're after, and we can take a look at that and see if we can make that possible. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a like or subscribe to keep up to date with what we're doing at Supermachine and all of the latest developments. We're excited to keep working on this technology and we're excited to see where it goes. Thank you.